digital video broadcasting communications, multipoint video distribution system in video meters for microwave TV broadcasting. These are radio relay systems of C, X, K, U, K, and K bands with high level of channels capacity, TV head end, TV link, and TV repeater stations. All in one video developed and presented by Rox company and its subsidiary Ukrainian microwave technologies. Let's begin from the signal sources. The first source is TV studio. There are a number of cameras with uncompressed video output, video mixers and other equipment which needed for preparing the content for photo encoding and broadcasting. The second source is Cloud Studio. Each stream is prepared on server and transmitted by IP. The third source is Terrestrial TV Station. Digital Terrestrial Television TNT2 standard is broadcasted by radio waves from special antennas, which are mounted on TV tower to televisions in consumers' residences in a digital format. On the TV tower are mounted a number of transmitters and even located independent TV studios. The fourth source is Satellite. Satellite television delivers TV content from the Earth station to the Earth's orbit to satellites by signal upconverting and then transmits it from satellites to the viewer's location directly. At viewer's side the signal is downconverted by low noise block LNB, which is located on each antenna. It is possible to see all the spectrum from each transponder and check parameters of each carrier using spectrum analyzer. Thus, obtaining the signal from one or several presented sources, TV provider can work with such content for further broadcasting using solutions developed by ROX and UMT companies. Let's take a look at a typical TV head and scan and focus on its main parameters. Number 1. Receivers. Set to box STB. Subscriber receiver, integrated receiver descrambler and or decoder, IRD, professional receiver. Subscriber receiver bottom has RF and USB inputs and the IRD above would have an addition ASI input if it has integrated a multiplexer inside. Such receivers have HDMI composite component ASI RF loop outputs. Number 2. Encoders. Encoders have analog and digital video and audio inputs, support different encode standards, and have ASI and IP outputs with IP management. Number 3. Modulators. Modulators have ASI inputs for transport streams and RF outputs with IP management. This example is two-channel modulator. Number 4. Scramblers. Presented 4-in-1 scrambler has integrated a multiplexer inside. Therefore, it has a number of ASI inputs and two ASI outputs. In addition, built-in modulator allows to transmit created bouquet through RF output. This scrambler can also receive several DVB IP input and transmit several DVB IP output streams. This hardware server is controlled by IP. Number 5. Combiner equalizers. These devices have several RF inputs and one RF output with AUX output have level adjustment for each channel and some options for example this injection for BC power supply. Number 6. Power dividers crossovers. As usual they have RF input, one or several RF outputs through which the power is supplied to BC. Management. 95% of all system is controlled by IP using conventional PC. Now let's draw a parallel between real TV head system left and its scam right. 
they're absolutely equal and a lot of our solutions have already been provided for installation in many territories of the world. Number 6. Transmitting site, BUC and antennas. SWA, slotted wavecat antenna, Omni antenna has circular radiation pattern. BUC, block up converter, converts frequencies from L band to C, X, K, U, K, K, A band. DC power is supplied from the divider crossover by coaxial cable together with L band RF to BC. For conventional local broadcasting without any TV repeating and or TV linking is enough to use simple DC injector with power supply unit. It is one channel solution. Thus DC goes from power supply unit to DC injector from where together with L band RF is supplied to BUC by coaxial cable and then antenna transmits the up converted RF signal to subscribers receiving sites. Another type of Omni antenna. It consists of two horn parabolic sector antenna with 120 degrees radiation pattern. Assembling this antenna together, like shown in this photo, helps to obtain the 360 degrees radiation pattern due to signal interference in phase. Installation of such broadcasting part is not very complicated, just need to be attentive to the antenna radiation plane. Now you see the best position of an omnidirectional antenna. It should be oriented to the tube or tower in which is mounted like this. A transmitting site we see Omni antenna, BUC, DC injector, hard one is for outdoor mounting and power supply unit. This one must be located indoor of course. Two sector antennas. Circular radiation pattern in H plane. Such installation allows to cover a territory with a radius of up to 50 kilometers. The next part of the video is TV Link, in which we will be shown its schematic and real main parts, connections and principle of operation. Transmitting part typically it consists of transmitter, BUC and directed antenna. Now let's check the assembling process. First of all, mount the fit horn to antenna with waveguide. Secondly, add antenna holder called rotary support. Thirdly, Add antenna cover to protect transmitting part from any obstacles inside and mount BUC. As a result, we obtain such construction. The same part we see on this cam, which is mounted on the tower or tube and looks like this. Receiving part. The receiving part of the TV link looks like transmitting one, just vice versa. In the exception of BC, in this part of TV link is used LNB, B, which down converts the frequency into L band, and other parts are the same. Protected DC injector is used in this case too. TV link allows to transmit signal up to 100 km wirelessly. Broadcasting part Near the receiving part of TV link, the broadcasting part can be mounted for further original channels transmission to subscriber side in current town. Now it's presented sector antenna. It's useful for covering a territory and exit sector in antenna front direction, not circular territory. Thus, TV link consists of two directed antennas, BUC and transmitting and being receiving sites, axial cables and DC injection kit. TV repeater consists of directed antennas with L and B on the receiving side, BC with sector and or only antenna on transmitting side, coaxial cables and DC injection kit. Let's take a look at real connections in TV link parts. TV repeater types.
Now TV repeater types will be presented to your attention. Type 1 of TV repeater station is called link repeater. It includes a receiving directed antenna, LNB for down converting frequency from C, X, K, U, K and or K, A band into L band. DC injector with PC for LNB and BC power supply, BC for up converting frequency from L band into mentioned early bands. And last one is a directed antenna for transmitting signal very directly link. Now let's check the realization of an idea. Receiving antenna with LNB. Protect TC injector, which provides power for LNB and BC. Transmit an antenna with BUC. It was link repeater. Second type of TV repeater station is so-called broadcast repeater. It has the same parts as previous, an exception of output antenna type. In this case it's only with circular addition pattern. Thus we have broadcast an antenna with BUC and receive an antenna with LNB. TV repeater helps to increase working distances between TV stations, but hops quantity is limited. Let's discuss this moment. Simple TV repeater. First hop between two TV repeater stations, distance up to 100 km. Second hop, distance the same, hop 3, hop 4, hop 5, and so on. Basic information about hops quantity limits you can see in the following tables. Example. For DVB-S2 RF signal modulation, 8PSK constellation, the coverage zone of wireless TV broadcasting will be up to 50 km. At the same time, TV repeaters can be set during maximum 3 hops in case of area relief allows to do that and carrier tenuous ratio will be not less than 50 dB on the last TV repeater station receiving side. But TV repeater station with signal regeneration have unlimited hops quantity. Regeneration means using special device called Regenerator. It has physically one or several LNB inputs and BC outputs. May include in build DC and or 10 MHz reference generator options both for LNB and for BC, with management by IP. In practice, we will have the following situation. On the first hope will be good quality signal, and the carrier to noise ratio will be excellent. On the second hope, due to spatial distortion, there will be a slight decrease in quality parameters, and on some hope, the carrier to noise ratio will be critical or insufficient to restore the signal. In this case, there is a TV station near the TV repeater tower in which one or several regenerators are located depending on carrier is quantity. As a result, the weak input signal is regenerated for the following transmission. <laughs> 